Hi there, this is John from RevSoft, and this video is an overview of why RevSoft designed the Rev Scheduler application as a distributed model rather than a centralized model. If you have any questions, please feel free to email us at product underscore info at revsoft.com. Rev Scheduler has a distributed architecture and requires no additional hardware as there's no central engine. Rev Scheduler runs on your existing hardware, no additional hardware. So here we go, here's an example. Three servers, centralized model, the engine is on the central server where all the decisions are made and usually where the database is installed as well. So any decisions about dependencies, triggers, group jobs for any of these three node servers are made here by the central server. So you've got four servers, one decision maker. In the Rev Scheduler model, we install what we call smart agents on each of the three servers. So all the decisions are made locally. The database, if it's an IBM i series, must be a local database as DB2 is part of the firmware and you won't find anything faster, by the way. If it is Linux, Unix, anything else, it is your decision of the database type and the location of it as well. So in this scenario, we have three servers, three decision makers. This scenario, four servers, one decision maker. Okay, so why the distributed model as opposed to the centralized model? Well, two main reasons, speed and efficiency. As companies are scheduling more jobs these days and not less, and more companies are using automation software as well. The distributed model also removes a central point of failure. All decisions are made on the local servers and can be made on any and all of the servers in your enterprise. If you have Rev Scheduler running on 50 or 100 servers, you've got 50 or 100 decision makers. Not one decision maker, that can be your central point of failure, trying to send out decisions to 50 or 100 servers. So imagine if you're running any of these IBM servers, ZOS, IBM I, AIX, and with DB2. Now imagine you go for a centralized model that has got Windows MS SQL Server. So we've got the skateboard here trying to tow the Rolls-Royce, Lamborghini, and the Ferrari. How many decisions could be made here rather than sending them to here? It has to be faster this way. It is not a theory. It is practical. And the distributed model harnesses the power of your servers as opposed to waiting lengthy periods of time to get the decisions of what to do. Don't forget in Top Gun, I feel the need. I feel the need for speed. One of our customers in Australia, Costco, they started out two years ago running group jobs, which is group projects that run group members across local and remote servers with about 400 jobs every night. That was their end of day every day of the year. We talked with them last month, they've got over 700 jobs in there now. So the way the group project is, the group project runs a whole lot of all the members. Members here at 10 and this job will run every day. The next job will wait until that previous one has completed normally, then it'll run every working day. This next job will wait until the prior one has completed normally and it will run this job on the second Wednesday in a 13 by four calendar. And we'll also, at the same time, submit this job that will run on the last working day of the month. Then, when 30 and 40 have both completed normally, this job here will run on the first and last day of the month. That is a typical scenario of what happens with group jobs. So, as I said, Costco two years ago, 400 member jobs. Now, over 700. Now, imagine that in a centralised model. After step one completes, it communicates back to the central model to get the what happens next decision, which comes back and then it decides to submit this job. Okay, so we're going backwards and forwards and a decision. So there's three steps in the process. Imagine doing that for over 700 member jobs every night compared to the distributed model that runs it and makes a decision here and then executes the next job. It's not a theory, this is practically fast and we've done 
some other videos that you'll see starting to appear that show the metrics of how fast this really can be. But any decision locally has to be faster than a decision made remotely due to the communication, the what happens next decision, then the communications back, as opposed to here, job finished, what happens next, let's go. Okay, that's the group jobs. Now what about trigger jobs, where a job completes and it triggers another one? So a dependency, how does that work? Well, all the decisions are made locally. So we created a job that if it completed normally, it would trigger 10 jobs on the same server. They can trigger jobs to run on remote servers, but we did it as an example. The central model, what would happen is the completion status of the first job would be sent back to the central server. It would process the what happens next. Then it would have to then send the go action for the 10 jobs back to the node server, and then it would submit each of the 10 jobs. Now, on the distributed model, what happened next decision is made locally. As an example, we did this on a small IBM P05. The completion of the first job that was going to trigger the others, the gap between that completion of that job and the submission of the 10th job was under one second. We did it on Linux and Windows and they're all under five seconds. There's no way known it could even communicate back to the central server before it had submitted the 10th job on the IBM i series. This is a type of power differential that you're going to see with this model. When we were doing the design for the distributed model, we looked at things that we liked in the central model. The main thing was where you could define the calendars and jobs in a single place on the central server. Yes, it was a central point of failure, but it made it easier for people to do. Okay, so what could we do in Rev Scheduler? What we can do is we can define a calendar or a job on one server, not a central server, any server in your network, and you can then publish that calendar or job to as many servers as you would like. When you update that calendar or jobs anywhere, those changes are automatically sent and applied to the other servers as well. RevView is the underlying piece of software that allows that to happen because RevView speaks all languages on all server types. So instead of defining it in one spot that was a central point of failure, we decided to allow you to publish it or broadcast it from one server to as many other servers as you would like it to have happen on. Well, that's a pros. Now onto the list of the cons. The first con we saw was the issue where the servers were bigger and more powerful than the centralized scheduler server. Imagine a Windows server with MS SQL Server controlling scheduling on ZOS with DB2. That is the skateboard trying to tow the Rolls Royce. Same way, if you've got IBM iSeries, you already have DB2 in the firmware. And if you've got AIX with DB2, you then have the skateboard trying to tow the Lamborghini and the Ferrari. Because on each of those IBM servers, the smart agent will have already made the what happens next decision and applied it before the communication from there has got to the centralized scheduling server. Don't worry about the what happens next on there and the communication back. The race has already been run and won. Next thing was if the centralized server cannot be contacted to make any decisions for dependencies, triggers, group jobs, etc., we've heard that referred to as deafness in the industry because if it can't get back there, how are the decisions made? Short answer, they aren't made. With the smart agent, if your server is up and powered and running, decisions are being made. No ifs, no buts. The central server can be the central point of failure. How do we remove that? Remove the central server. Now, if we have a job that we would like to run in the next two minutes, 10 minutes, later today, we'd have to define it on the central server, then roll it out to the other server. That was very painful for a lot of people. Revsoft? all effective immediately. And then we wanted to hold a job or force run it or things like that. I had to connect to the central server to manage the schedules. In RevSoft, using RevView, you can have as many focal points as you want, not just a single focal point. So if we've got four focal points managing all the critical business schedules 
I can go to any of those and I can hold a job, force run a job, do whatever I need to with a the job there. So instead of having one focal point you can do, you can have multiple focal points. Go to whichever one you'd like. That's it for the overview of why we created the distributed model. If you've got any questions or comments, please feel free to email us at product underscore info at revsoft.com. Thank you for your time.